everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for this very special video that we are putting together all about Pluto and his momentum into Aquarius that's coming up for us in 2023. And today I have the gorgeous Paula Shaw joining me to discuss this really, really important topic. Paula is an intuitive astrologer and a very, very dear friend of mine who's been a friend for many years of my journey, um, especially as we've journeyed into astrology together at a similar time. So it is lovely to have you, Paula. Welcome to the channel. Hi, Ksenia. Thank you for having me and for being here to speak about our shared passion, the thing that has helped us make sense of so much in our lives. It is just such a delight for me to sit here with you in this space and talk to people about these bigger cycles and try to make sense of this, this crazy, crazy time we're living through. Thank you for letting me be here. Pleasure. I really wanted to do this with you, Paula, because every time we get together for a chat, which which isn't all that often, but when we do, it's always really, really deep. And we have talked about the Pluto cycles before, and I just knew there's no one I would rather discuss this with than you. Um, so we've jumped on a Zoom call. Paula's located up in Queensland. I'm down in cold old Victoria. And so we've decided this is the perfect opportune moment to talk about this up and coming energy. Yeah. Um, now, Pluto is moving into, I just want to give the dates right from the get-go so people know what we're talking, the, the era that we're talking about. Pluto is moving into the sign of Aquarius in tropical astrology on March the 23rd next year, 2023, and he'll be there until June the 11th, 2023. And then he's going to go back in again from January the 20th, 2024 until September the 1st, 2024. And then we have the final momentum into there permanently from November the 19th, 2024. And that's going to, he's going to be in Aquarius permanently from uh, until March the 8th, 2043. So 20 years, essentially, he's going to be in the sign of Aquarius. So it, it is a, a generational thing and it will be quite an epoch in the journey of humanity when this occurs. So very, very exciting. And as I said, Paula is such an intuitive um, guide. She, she offers great wisdom and guidance in her uh, her business. Did you want to share about your, your business, Paula, what you offer? Very quickly. So, yeah, I work with uh, clients. Uh, I work with tarot and intuitive guidance, tuning in. And I found over the years astrology is a phenomenal tool to really help people find where they're at within those greater cycles and to kind of get the context of like, this is what I'm going through in my marriage, for example. Well, let's look at the bigger cycles and let's look at how it's affecting your chart. So I'm every day I get more and more um, excited and more passionate about understanding these cycles and how they feed into our everyday reality. So yeah, I love, I love what, and I do, I work intuitively, as you said, with astrology. So I, what I love about you, Ksenia, is you're really technical and I go to you for that <laughs> and the knowledge, like you're a great, great teacher. Thank you. And yet I work in a different way and I can just see, you know, how our two ways can meet really well in, in a cool space and have different perspectives that can feed into, you know, giving people listening and a, a way to listen and maybe find your own interpretation or your own personal experience of what we're talking about. Absolutely. And that's why I wanted to do this with you, because we do come from different sides of the astrological community in that sense. But it, they're so complementary, you know, mm -hmm. like if you've got too much technical knowledge and you're not listening to spirit, to your higher self, to the divine guidance, then you're really missing something with your astrological yeah. work and vice versa. You have actually quite a lot of technical knowledge yourself. I do know that. So you do incorporate the both, um, yeah. which is really lovely. One of my teachers, Bernadette Brady, wrote a book um, called The Eagle and the Lark, which is all about that, the, com the combining of the intuitive with the technical. And I probably err towards more of the technical, you err towards more of the um, yeah. intuitive, but we have both. And yeah. I think bringing both of our skill sets together is really going to benefit this discussion, this topic about Pluto today. So I'm so happy to do this with you, Paula. Well, and also it's very Aquarian. Aquarian is multidimensional. It's like, let's come at it from multiple yes. angles and not just be caught in this 
you know, Capricornian structural technical way. So yeah, it's makes sense. I hadn't thought of that, but that is so true because Aquarius as a sign governed by Saturn, which is the structural and Aquarius, which is the inspirational. <laughs> so it, it's just perfect that, that we're yeah. doing this. I think, oh, I didn't even realize that. I love it when, what did, what did that guy out of the A team used to say? I love it when the, when a plan comes together. <laughs> That's what I said. Do you remember that terrible old show? <laughs> I do actually. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So that that's wonderful. Now, we thought we might, I mean, to understand where we're going, you've got to, kind of got to understand where you've been. So yeah. we might um, start by having a bit of a chat about Pluto's time in Aquarius, which has been a paradigm shifting to say that. You mean in Capricorn, sorry? Did I say Aquarius? Thank you. Yes, in, in Capricorn. And he's been there since 2008. So, with, yeah. What started with? The GFC. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. But I, actually, I think the GFC was more, I mean, uh, Pluto played a big part in that, obviously, but um, a lot of that was a result of the Pluto-Jupiter conjunction, which occurs every 12 years and is always a cycle that resets financial markets in some way, shape or form. So um, that was, um, yeah, 2008 was 12 years prior to their most recent conjunction in 2020. So that was part of the paradigm as well that Jupiter was involved in that. Um, but I think that it moved because it moved into Capricorn, it was in Capricorn that that occurred. Then we did have quite a shake up of the material realm, Capricorn being an earth sign. Um, what else have you observed as being sort of a hallmark of Pluto and Capricorn in these times? Well, for me, you know, Pluto is amplifying whatever it's touching moving through it's generational and capricorn is governance authority structures the institutions that hold reality together in a really vertical top down you know structured it's it's you know almost patriarchal hierarchical structures mm. the Fair real enough. yeah the real vertical structures and what i've noticed big time sitting with my clients and just being such a observer of reality is that Pluto has come in and just dredged up the shadow, you know, dredged up and amplified and just started unearthing the misuse of power. Mm. I've been doing some more research just for my own personal trying to make sense of Pluto. And I'm looking, I looked back at the previous Pluto in Sagittarius cycle, very briefly, you might know more, but what I what really stood out to me, Ksenia, was this was when the misuse of power in the Catholic Church started to be revealed, which Sagittarius is linked to religion. And so just to give a little hint of, of bigger cycles upon cycles of what Pluto is doing, yeah. Pluto's coming in and saying, let's and it amplifies, it makes it bigger. So yeah. I've noticed. Pluto in Capricorn has made it bigger and the the ultimate goal from how I see Pluto in, in people's lives and in the world and in my own journey, it's gonna it's gonna dredge it up. It's gonna really bring up that shadow yeah. and it might for a period of time make it bigger. Yeah. Like it's making the Capricornian conservative values and structures it's amplifying it's like in our face mm, mm. but i feel and my prayer and my hope and my greatest wish is that it's dredging it up so that it can be healed so that it can be seen you can only heal and you can only transcend that which you know pluto comes in and says let's look at it yeah. let's look it in the eye we cannot deny this anymore yeah totally that's how he works i mean I've always described him as sort of the one who who causes the trauma, but he's also the one that shines a light on it as well. And if you go through a Pluto square transit, which most of our generation have already done, and we're one of the only generations to go through that in our 30s, people who were born in sort of the the late 60s, early 70s, or through, through to the end of the 70s, have gone through it at a very young age. Some people, uh, like uh, people who were born with, say, Pluto in... Um, 
cancer would never go through uh, a Pluto square, you know, that just happens too late in life and they pass away before oh, they I didn't cancer. know that. That's because Pluto goes through sign, different signs at a different speed because he has an elliptical orbit. Yes, so when he moves through uh, sort of Libra and Scorpio and Sagittarius, he's actually going the fastest that he ever goes. Yeah. And so for him to actually move around to do to, to square himself in the natal chart takes less time. And so we've hit it in our 30s. Um, but if when he's oh, opposite no. that, you know, uh, down in sort of um, the cancer-ish area, um, then yeah. you won't, that, that he takes longer to make that square aspect because he's moving slower through Makes those sense. those other signs. So mm. can I share something to that point um, with... Pluto being discovered in 1930, mm -hmm. right? So when you're saying that those, those earlier generations weren't experiencing that Pluto square. Yeah. Well, it's mostly so, like me, Pluto is fastest through Scorpio. And so when Pluto is in Taurus, he's at his slowest. So Taurus, well, Gemini. Was, well, the point I wanted, sorry, the internet went a bit funny. Yeah. Um, well, the point I wanted to make is, I've noticed that Pluto, it's almost like Pluto's come up in the 1930s more into our consciousness yeah. through its discovery. And with our generations experiencing that first Pluto square, which I see in clients' charts all the time, is so significant. It is undeniable. It kind of makes sense. It's almost like we are journeying more at a conscious level. It's like Pluto's showing up at, at this time to really, you know, encourage a huge transformation yes. in our lives. And that's what the purpose of a Pluto square is. It's it's one of the top four transits that will completely alter your life. Yeah. Um, the others, for people who are interested, are uh, being um, a progressed new moon, uh, Saturn across the ascendant, and Uranus across the ascendant. And Pluto is at that level of life-changing influence. Mm -hmm. And so what he will do with Pluto square, as you've seen in your clients and we've both experienced ourselves yeah. is he shines a light in the basement of our psyche. What muck is down there? What, mm -hmm. what old habits and paradigms coming from past lives or maybe early this life, what old traumas and wounds have you not addressed? Are you denying that are down there? And we're going to deal with that shit. It's time yeah. that we shone a light in the basement and clean that thing up. Yeah. So that's what happens personally for us with a Pluto square transit. And not that the whole world is having a Pluto square transit at the moment, but collectively that is how Pluto accomplishes his mission, shining mm. a light on the darkness. You know, yeah. he's the God of the underworld. So, you know, he's going to know all about the darkness and can reveal it. Um, and so when you talk about Sagittarius, I hadn't put that to get two and two together about religion, but of course that's, that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. And also in that Pluto and Sagittarius time is when, People like Doreen Virtue were just, you know, the new ageism started really coming up and it got just massive and huge. So this whole shift in power from religion to spiritual belief and what's the truth. And I'm not saying that's all good. Absolutely not. But just watching, and I haven't looked any deeper into the Pluto Sagittarius times, but they were the first things that popped up. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. especially getting towards the end of that Pluto and Sagittarius cycle, Jupiter would have gone through um, Scorpio. And oh, when, wow. when Jupiter's in Scorpio, we get a lot of things revealed uh, about like religion, um, you know, and, and that sort of thing as well. But um, because Scorpio is governed by Pluto, so, so that was a cycle that was coming in sort of a year yeah. or two before we shifted out of Sagittarius into... Oh, wow. It, it really fueled that as well i think um but i think a lot of people who were born with pluto in sagittarius which isn't that long ago um the sign before uh sorry not pluto and sagittarius pluto and scorpio the sign before sagittarius yeah. um they are the ones they're the millennials now and they are the ones that are fueling this current rise in interest in astrology and uh in these sort of esoteric uh practices because it's the millennial group that have really popularized astrology as a, as a 
you know, not a religion, but an an interest field Mm -hmm. again. So um, Pluto does some pretty serious things to the global collective when he moves through a sign. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see what these Pluto and Scorpio people are going to be doing in the world um, going forward, because they're they're a very powerful, somewhat psychic yeah. and um, and and highly energized group of um, or generation of people yeah. at that time. I've noticed they're not scared to to do the work, to to mm. do the inner work, to go in, Face look at the dark, shadow, dive deep. They they're not going to take, you know, like in Australia, the millennials are becoming the uh, the generation of millennials are almost the same as the boomers. Yeah, yeah. So as we just did our big, you know, um, census. And in, in terms like, of population size, you yeah, mean they're the same? Yeah. Numbers. It's really and, interesting to me that they're quite at each other a lot of the time, the boomers and the millennials. Yeah. But, our but, generation's but, smaller. We're in the middle. We're like yeah. in between. Like if we're doing Pluto Libra, like let's figure out marriage and relationship and that's let's right. let's do divorce. And that's been like definitely my Pluto Libra clients. I'm like, okay, well, how, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about relationship. <laughs> but that's <laughs> our issue. Oh, Lord. <laughs> but then the, the Pluto Scorpio guys, when I sit with them, they just, they get it. They're not scared. Like not all of them. I'm sure there's anomalies, but majority they're like, let's go in, let's do the work. Mm. Let's stop with this bullshit misuse of power. Yeah. Don't, don't be more than me. So I find it's going to be interesting to see how, the yeah. world changes as the Pluto Scorpio generation start coming into more because they're Authority. a big generation. Mm-hmm. They're, they're a bigger. I'd be interesting to look at the stats for the world, but yeah, you know, I'd say it's probably similar to Australia. Wow. And and that's I feel that is divinely orchestrated. Like the universe decided it's time we had a bunch of highly spiritual, mystical people yep. running the show. So let's Let's throw a heap of souls in there when Pluto's in Scorpio and get that thing on the on the go. Um, I think that will actually we will see that over the next twenty years as as the millennial group rise into power because Aquarius as a sign when Pluto's in Aquarius we're going to get astrology emphasized again because mm. Scorpio and Aquarius are very strongly associated with astrology. Yeah. So um, I think we will see a lot of. Pluto and Scorpio generation really coming into their power, dealing with new age momentum, um, things like uh, astrology, um, but other mystical topics as well um, during the t- during the age of Aquarius. So I'm I'm yeah. excited by that component. Yeah. So lo- you go. Sorry, I was just going to say, like you said, Pluto's aim is to reveal the darkness so that we could. Well, Pluto rules composting and toilets and all any, you know, um, uh, tips, you know, where you send all your rubbish, like that's Pluto rules those sorts of fields in astrology. So that's his whole purpose is to compost things, to excrete, to get rid of all the muck. Um, So it's no surprise when we look at Pluto and Capricorn and see what has been revealed to us all, how mucky our hierarchies are, how shitty, quite literally, um, the people in power are, and how, uh, how like Pluto's manipulation, yeah. Pluto's coercion, um, and trauma as well. Pluto rules trauma and and hierarchies. We're seeing how they've induced trauma on people, how they've manipulated people, how they've um, been just. <laughs> I could use all sorts of lovely swear words, but you know. And we're seeing how the hierarchies have have manipulated and taken advantage. Totally. I, um, like for me, I, one of the things I see is any old institutions of power or unquestioned ideals beliefs traditions they're being challenged they're being shaken and that includes these old patriarchal approaches to life you know and when i say patriarchy i don't mean some big gender war man versus woman i mean institutions of power that have been you know um it's it's giving power to the elder males in the community whether it's through the church through the the schools and yes it's been changing it absolutely has but we have to stop and really reflect on the thousands of years mm-hmm. we have lived in a patriarchal mostly uh structured societal creation and this pluto and capricorn season what i have seen is you know these old patriarchal regimes are being confronted that then yeah. when 
it's like um you know pam gregory we both love her um yeah. astrologer youtube astrologer she's incredible and she used this analogy Ksenia, about this time we're living through it's like the wizard of oz and we get up there and we move the curtain we see it's just this little old man it's like we're starting to see through what these big structures and ivory towers and like you must do what the government says and you must do what your father says and da, 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 da. this is being so challenged right now are we going to wake up after this pluto capricorn time and everything's going to be awesome no but the seeds well i i hope if i'm <laughs> really wrong let's do that video and we'll be like paula was wrong yay <laughs> But I feel that after this, and we're obviously we're going to talk about Pluto in Aquarius, we're going to see some of these, you know, seeds that have been revealed, the new seeds, you know, like Pluto is the underworld mm. and what grows in the underworld, the seed, that's where it starts. So Pluto is going to reveal new seeds, hopefully for the age of or the Pluto in Aquarius time. So we can start coming out of these vertical structures and move towards more of a horizontal yeah. structural approach, which is mm -hmm. a promise of Aquarius. Like let's get out of top down, let's go horizontal. Let's, let's get humanity involved, not just big brother, not just Papa bear, not just the patriarch, yeah. you know, let's see. Well, what I mean, Pluto rules compost. What do you do with compost? You put it on your flowers. It's you fertilizer. To make things grow, yeah. So, you know, once we have composted the old hierarchies, which I really relish that idea, um, we can put it on something new to create something beautiful. So, yeah. But that's it's, it's, it's these traditions that we haven't questioned for so long mm -hmm. and it's time for us to start journeying with traditions and ways of being that reflect who we are actually becoming yeah you know you can see the education system is also associated with capricorn pluto's been moving through that how does that not really serve all of our children yeah. you know how many kids are neurally diverse now as though they're the abnormality yet what if that isn't abnormal and i'm not saying all people with neural diversity are you know, there's, there's real serious issues with that. People really struggle with things. But what if this is, you know, the evolution of the species and rather than saying that that's wrong because it doesn't fit into this small, narrow paradigm, yeah. you know, that's so many parents homeschooling, communities are popping up. That's Pluto and Aquarius. I'm jumping yeah. No, but you're right. And, and to be honest, the... The dissolving and the composting of yeah. the hierarchies has already seen the Pluto and Aquarius themes popping up. We're, yes. we're, it, it doesn't, and we were talking about this before we started the video, this sort of thing doesn't just happen, boof, overnight one to the other. There's a there's this integration period. So, you know, um, we are in this integration zone now, if you like, where we're seeing the results of the composting of Capricorn energy starting to feed into the new paradigm that's coming for the next 20 years when Pluto yeah. will be in Aquarius. And I I mean, there's a lot to get excited about. There's a lot to sort of bite your nails in like uh, about two. Yeah. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna discuss those things in a second. I just want to make sure we've covered everything uh, about Pluto and Capricorn. You mentioned when Pluto was in Sag that it was religion and obviously that carried on into mm -hmm. the Capricorn experience too because because nothing is ever you know just changed from one to another there's yeah. a flow on um and we saw like the the hierarchies in hollywood you know the mm -hmm. um who's that idiot that um harvey <laughs> yes Wine. that guy um whose name i've just blocked out of my mind <laughs> but yeah, yeah i mean that occurred during like his downfall occurred yeah. during Pluto and Capricorn, because he was part of the hierarchical structure yeah. in Hollywood. Now it's probably got a lot. It's, it is patriarchal life. again. Sorry, yeah. I'm not trying to get political, but it, it really, it is that old men in power yep. holding this position just because we've, we've just agreed to that for so long. I know. 
And then you've got the Epstein stuff yeah. as well um, and the Prince Andrew stuff, which in my opinion hasn't been dealt with sufficiently, but, you know, there might be more composting yet to go. Pluto's yeah. still got a little bit of time left in, yeah. in Capricorn. So next year will be very interesting as he sort of has one foot in Aquarius and one foot in Capricorn throughout the year. There's mm. going to be, you know, that sort of thing happening. Um yeah, so they're, they're the two big themes that have jumped out to me. Obviously, government abuse has been another thing. Um, I don't know about, and I'm interested in your opinion about this, Paula, um, I don't know about um, the New World Order stuff because when I look at that and their globalist agenda, I'm like, that's a bit scary to me because I don't agree with it. I don't know what your opinion is, but I'll find out in a second. But to me, globalism is a shadow side of Aquarius energy it's mm. not Capricorn um however the way they've set up their movement into a globalist agenda is with a hierarchical structure of you know world health organization world economic forum and all that sort of thing so it's kind of got to me this globalist agenda and the the mechanisms that they're trying to put in place to bring that about have their foot in both Capricorn and Aquarius right. what do you th what do you make of that I I study and practice Tibetan Buddhism, not as a religion, and the whole approach is going beyond the duality, but realizing that everything has a duality, everything has a shadow mm -hmm. side. And so the, you know, Aquarian themes, yes, there's, like you said, there's a shadow to it. There's also like, you know, the brotherhood of man, the humanhood of human, I like to say, <laughs> very Aquarius. Um, you know, and just this, this, this dissemination of power, this spreading out power, decentralization of power is the big promise of the age of Aquarius. We had to sing it at some point, didn't we? <laughs> oh, I'm not a great singer. I, I apologize, everyone. Um, cause then you're better singer than me. Okay. Um, so yeah, the Aquarian theme. So the way I see, and this is, this is just me, obviously, this is how I deal with reality without getting lost in the polarity which is you know something about the age of pisces and the fish in the ocean of illusion and being bound to each other but swimming in opposite directions mm. yet here we are trying to come out of these polaric du dualistic approaches and i really feel that aquarius wants to take it out in out of the duality and into the complexity into the mm. nuance into it's not just either or or this or that now will we get there maybe not in our lifetime the age of aquarius is another conversation and we could do another chat i'd love to do that with you mm. um but this you, isn't the age we're not talking about the age of aquarius we're talking about pluto and aquarius that's right and do you feel that and, this is another sort of step forward towards the age of aquarius by pluto moving in there i feel it's a preemption a preempting yeah. the age i feel that you know the jupiter saturn conjunction in aquarius in 2021 yeah i think there's going to be lots of activations it's like i do a lot of work with ritual um, with the moon, I do not sacrifice animals or humans. Okay, no <laughs> one gets pointing that out. <laughs> unless it's a bad ex-boyfriend. That, that no, I don't do that. No one does that, I promise. Um at least not. boyfriends just went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <And> Rightly so. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel <laughs> um yeah, but I really feel that there's, you know, you don't just wake up one day and say, I'm done. It's a sequence of choices, of events, of letting go. And I love working with the lunar phases because every full moon you let go, you let go. There's not just one magical moon and it's all done and now I'm happy. The dodgy ex-boyfriend's done. It's like, it's a journey. And so the Pluto in Aquarius is going to be a part of a bigger waves of these yeah. new paradigms coming in. Yeah. So will but but it's pluto ksenia like you know it's pluto is going to open up well what's the shadow of this maybe pluto and aquarius at this point is going to support us to and you know i always take the more positive side you to do. support us to maybe move towards getting this right maybe the next 20 years are going to sort out 
the rubbish. You know, I can't help but feel that there's, you know, we're, we're like, we're in, I feel like on some level we're in the 11th hour. Mm. Aquarius is the 11th sign. Pluto mm. is in the 11th sign coming yeah. up. And maybe, and like you said before, there is a universal flow that I do experience that evolution does seem to be the gig. Let's yeah. keep going. And maybe this Pluto coming in to Aquarius in the 11th hour before we move into the age of Aquarius or as we're journeying with that, and you spoke to this before really well, it's two cycles meeting. Maybe we're going to look at it and go, let's get this right. Maybe. That's my prayer for the human race. I hope so. I hope you're right. <laughs> I really hope you're right. Um, yeah, I was just... Before we perhaps move into talking more about what a, a Pluto and Aquarius might bring, um, what's, I don't know if I should even talk about this, I was going to say, what is your opinion of the involvement of, say, the World Health Organization and the World Economic Forum and those things with a hierarchical structure like the Masonic Lodge, because they are all high in, in that hierarchy of the, the Masonic Lodge. And that's, to me, that is one hierarchy that people kind of push to the side and ignore and don't talk about we talk about government we talk about you know the hollywood hierarchies and the royal families and da -de da -de da but i i haven't seen pluto as yet composting the masonic well, hierarchy do you think it will before he gets before he finishes his time in um in capricorn well maybe this will happen when pluto's in aquarius because what is Aquarius? And look, we're already talking about what Aquarius is. Yeah. Aquarius is focused on the collective, on society. And maybe because the, the World Health Organization, and we probably shouldn't be saying that. We're probably gonna get I know. It'll, this video will be banned. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the, the big organizations that are looking after the collective, right? So that's Aquarius. That's not Capricorn. These big institutions of power that are about the world and global issues, maybe during Pluto and Aquarius is when we'll see their shadow being revealed. Maybe because what you've spoken about, they don't strike me as they're not Capricornian. They're, they're, they're global. So maybe, you know, we'll see the shadow like NATO, for example, and what's really going on in, in that part of the world. What's really going on with these powers that are not just Capricornian and conservative, they're trying to uh, evolve the whole race. Like it's, it's going, it's going to be a really interesting time to your point with the, the globalization. It is going to happen. Well, it's actually I think about it and I think the the Capricornian side of these organizations has probably what's been, what's been exposed during Pluto True. and Aquarius when I think about it. Um, yeah. You know, their, their hierarchical practices and, you know, their hierarchical agendas. And then if we think about what occurred last time Pluto was in Aquarius, well, we were talking about this before we started the video, we had the French Revolution and a lot of hierarchical leaders lost their literal heads during that uprising yeah. um, because revolution is an Aquarian theme. And so I think the, the expose has happened of the corruption in Capricorn that then leads to an Aquarian response when Pluto moves into Aquarius, True. where we're not going to take that anymore because brotherhood of man, we're all equal. Yeah. We should all be on a level playing field. No, you're up there and I'm down here. Yeah. Um, so there, there's that, that Aquarian theme of equality, humanitarianism, what's best for all, not just what's best for me and my and lining my pockets and setting myself up for a happy retirement at the expense yeah. of everyone else. It's what is best for the community, what works in community. So um, I've probably answered my own question there, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think, well, which is that Pluto has exposed the hierarchies so that they're going to be dealt with in the Aquarian age because it's, like we said, it's not just a definitive end of one cycle into another no. it's a crossover period well it also in my research it was also when pluto was last in aquarius was when the u.s was breaking away from the the from britain mm -hmm. it was 
that's when it really kicked off and in my research and i'm not a, i'm not a historian they were you know that's it was that time that uh, really kicked off the u.s becoming um independent and it's yeah. own i love america for that for their breaking away from the british empire you know yeah. that that's when that was happening when pluto was in aquarius so maybe that there but but pluto wasn't in the consciousness of humanity at that point and okay. so it'll be interesting to see now that we know and the us is going through its pluto return yeah so it's revisiting those original intentions um and we can see that that's happening and that's not what this conversation's about but yeah i think i'm i'm it's going to be interesting to see what comes. I mean, we, I can't, I'm not trying to, I don't think you are either predict what's coming, but there's, we can look to the cycles the and themes. the themes. Yeah. The themes and the topics that are going to be strong. Yeah, for sure. And uh, certainly as Pluto moves into Aquarius, I think things will be very interesting yeah. on a big world scale. Now I'm not a mundane astrologer. I do it for my own enjoyment, but I don't, practice mundane astrology i'm not here advising world leaders or anything like that on what's going to happen but um it is interesting to me that um yeah that like we've just described there is this pluto return element in the american chart that will then play out in the coming years when pluto's in aquarius so there may be revolutions in america again there may be a liberation that occurs amongst the people in america because a lot of their hierarchical structures have been exposed for what they are yeah. as well um so that is quite exciting to me if um if you know as we see america embrace liberation an aquarian theme um and freedom an america uh, an aquarian yeah. theme not american theme <laughs> they are american themes i suppose too the land of the free and home of the brave but what is also interesting to me is China, because the grand conjunction of Jupiter mm. and Saturn occurred at one degree, uh, sorry, zero degrees of Aquarius, which Pluto will activate next year when he yeah. moves in there. And the rising degree of the Chinese chart is one degree of Aquarius. So it's all tied in with that. And I actually think that that grand conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn was setting up a 20 year period where China will rise up as the new empire in the world. That's my, my opinion. Um, I'm like I said, I'm not a mundane astrologer, but that is what I feel may be a result of what yeah. happens. And I think Pluto and Aquarius for the next 20 years is going to play into that because it will be in China's first house in their yeah. chart. So Pluto in the first house makes like it empower Pluto empowers whatever it touches. Jupiter expands whatever it touches. Pluto empowers things and so i think china is going to be quite empowered in the coming 20 years sorry go ahead oh sorry you're just making me have thoughts um <laughs> oh i'm so sorry <laughs> no, no it's good how it's dare a, i it's like, oh, um yeah don't do that to me um but well what's the shadow of aquarius it is uh the shadow of uh everybody being one and the same and we know that china has a, a certain setup mm. where the individual's not really honored in a huge way it is more about the society more about the country so i hear you i feel like they could really move into that place but there's also this other side to pluto moving through your first house and looking at that shift of power and maybe challenging and, and amplifying the shadow of their way of dealing with society, with their people. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, the Pluto is power yeah. and Aquarius is connected to technology, like seeing the true power of technology. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we see technology wars, we see, you know, the revolution maybe in these countries not being so much focused on guns and people fighting, but technology wars, um, people really manipulating each other through, through technology, through mm. the manipulation of information. I think it's going to look really different to anything we can imagine right now, because that's Aquarius. Aquarius is one of the well the modern day ruler is uranus it's unpredictable we can't predict it but we can definitely be looking for those iterations and those 
new ways of going through a revolution yeah and to see what plays out in countries like the us and china with their how long can that regime that way of having power can they sustain it does it work you know like there was some some of my research was showing that yes that pluto and aquarius time uh liberated some things but there was a shadow that came after of too much of um you know not honoring the individual and the highest expression of aquarius at, aquarius at a collective level is the individual opening up awakening to their full potential as a full seed and then contributing back to the collective not separating out yeah. so maybe those regimes and those ways of structuring society where the individuals neglected yeah could be composted really by pluto sorry could be composted That's by pluto. yeah and revealed yeah. and really um go through a big revelation and a big like whoa let's what is this maybe maybe i think that would be one of the the more positive outcomes that that could actually bring yeah. um i think that would be fantastic and um you know it, it, like you said uranus is one of the co-rulers of aquarius and uranus is highly individualistic like it, it, but it's individual with a purpose to contribute to humanity whereas the opposite sign leo is i'm an individual watch me shine you know yeah. um so the, both of them are very individualistic but with different purposes and agendas in that so how does my individualism yeah. contribute to the furtherance of society yeah. that's that's an aquarian theme so i really love what you've just shared there i think that's that's really really powerful actually um and you know one of the themes of aquarius is a desire for reform and social justice yeah. so that's um that's definitely uh i think on the cards for a lot i mean china's not the only country ruled by like with a rising sign of aquarius yeah. either it just so happens that its rising degree is right at the trigger point for the the saturn jupiter conjunction which is why i, I mention it so there will be other yeah. countries too that are going through some sort of reforms and social justice um it's really interesting i just have to mention this because i do love mythology and the mythology around aquarius is very very interesting um aquarius is associated with the greek um god prometheus now prometheus also has connections to the lucifer energy um who was uh kicked out of heaven for bringing the light of knowledge to humanity um prometheus was brought the light of knowledge to humanity and so you know aquarius is this light of knowledge um and so that that's a lovely aquarian theme not not to be kicked out of heaven but to <laughs> to bring the light of knowledge and, and wisdom and that would be a wonderful theme to see come out of pluto in aquarius where mm. we we come out more enlightened more aware more conscious and we've seen people waking up over the last three years in preparation for this event so i think we're going to get a lot more of that happening mm. but um what is really interesting to me is that there is an association in Greek mythology uh, of uh, Aquarius with Prometheus's son. Um, now, I hope I say this right. I'm terrible at pronouncing Greek <laughs> Greek names. Um, Deucalion, I think, is how you say Prometheus's son's name. But um, this guy <laughs> built a ship to survive a flood just like noah in in the bible um and so you know and we think about aquarius is the water bearer tipping out the water onto humanity and i'm like okay so how does this tie into the aquarian themes it's about surviving a del the deluge i don't know if you have any sort of thoughts on that topic but i was trying to sort of say this in my mind how does this greek myth um tie into this aquarian theme and maybe what you know a deluge is an upheaval and mm. aquarius is a sign of change it's it's rapid change fast change mm. um one of its expressions so you know maybe we're i'm not saying we're all going to go through a flood or a deluge or anything but it's about survive you know building the infrastructure the yeah. ship to survive in a new world mm. um and so that's what i i i 
put together in my head as what this myth may be referring to. And so much of Aquarian themes are um, digital revolutions, changing how we live, where we live, um, how we work. Um, but lots of change and innovation, new technologies. Um, and we're building, I think, this ship for a new dimension, for a new world. That's how I was um, bringing that myth into the the energy of um, of Aquarius. Did you did you do you have any other sense of of, um, of how that might be tying into the story of Aquarius as such? Yeah, I mean it's it's so beautiful your knowledge of the 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 myth and the history and the water bearer pouring the waters down onto humanity. And the glyph of Aquarius being the waves, but some say it's airwaves, radio yeah. signal, signal yeah. Yeah. technology. And so maybe this isn't a, a literal manifestation of water. No. Maybe it's a wave of consciousness, a wave of energy pulsating through the collective. And, and you know, I've heard astrologers talk about the water bearer, bearer bringing this wave to equalize and bring equity to humanity and to balance it all out. Cause like if we're all in water, we're all floating, you know, hopefully. So, you know, unless we're balancing. Jack and we can't get on the, the door with <laughs> Kate Winslet, you know, <laughs> and we're not floating. Sorry. It's okay. It's, um, yeah, it's bringing that equity and that's something that i i see with aquarius is about equity it's about the fairer not equal not equality equity mm. the fairer dis distribution of wealth knowledge power of all the resources again this is a promise this is a potential we could get to and building and and like to your point you know building the the new ship building the new uh, way to survive we're in the 11th hour with climate change if science is right and i'm not saying it is or it isn't but if it is i lean more towards it being accurate then we're on the edge of something where we have to reconfigure reconst recon reconstruct society reconstruct community the way we live i keep getting these visions of humanity living in pods across the planet and small communities that share resources that people you've aligned with we get to choose now because of technology we're not just like in that patriarchal you are marrying this person you get the land because you're the oldest son it's yeah. it's aquarian like we're moving into these places where we could live in these little self-sustaining communities but we're still connected globally through technology mm -hmm. and that could be the new way of surviving the big changes that are coming so i love that you brought that myth in and then connecting it to the glyph and to the themes and you know and then you can't not talk about pluto in aquarius and not talk about the age of aquarius and the bigger mega cycles we're moving <laughs> into and i wouldn't be surprised the more i'm sitting with you and tuning in if this pluto in aquarius time is going to really start showing us giving us little hits of this is who we need to be yeah. you know dane rudyard a great astrologer i love his work talked about the seeds the aquarian the this the seed people not necessarily looking at charts and looking for aquarius or you know 11th house strong or uranus or saturn in a person's chart but the seeds of the new age and these individuals that will have these very let's say aquarian approaches for example all religions have value aquarius like i'm not just going to follow one dogma mm -hmm. you know every being no matter what neural diverse wiring you have we are all valuable and so the the seeds will be these people that can they're not just saying it they feel it they know it it is their truth maybe in this pluto aquarian time they're going to maybe be born i hope so yeah if I wish I was having a baby in Pluto in Aquarius, <laughs> you know, so we can see maybe in 30 years to come after this cycle, who are these people? What are they? Maybe they are the seeds. Pluto is connected to the seed of transformation, of breaking down the soil to reveal and regenerate something new. It's the resurrection. It's the phoenix 
rising out of the ashes. That, that is the outcome. You know, Pluto just wants you to get your power back. Yeah. And yeah. maybe the power is going to come back to the people more in this time of Aquarius. Maybe we go, wait a minute, we want to have control over technology, not just some plutocrats that dominate three big platforms and we are all at the mercy of three people. Yeah. Aquarius is like, no more of these top down. This is humanity. Yeah. I think you could be right. When we look at how Pluto has revealed the corruptions of governments and things like that during his time in Capricorn, I think we're going to see a lot of the te technological platforms, they're going to be composted as well and and changed into something that we can put on our gardens, you know, something new, something more like you've talked about, more uh, lateral rather than top down. Yeah. So, um, and I love your comment about the alternative communities. I think sort of bottom up innovation, grassroots, yeah. all those sorts of things um, to create alternative communities. It's already happening. Most of you know mm -hmm. my connections now. Uh, these last couple of years have really refined who my true connections are um, with like minded people, and yeah. a lot of them want to establish you know alternative communities. And I just I, I get excited by that. I'm like, what could we build here with this? You this know, this is the Noah's Ark. Maybe yeah. this is the to your point with the the mythology. Mm. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's more because we are moving into the age of Aquarius, maybe it's going to show up in a completely different way to what we've ever envisioned it to be before. Yeah, beautiful. I love it. I love it. We've spoken to things, you know, you talked about Tibetan Buddhism and dualism. Um, there is a shadow side to Aquarius. Um, Pluto is going to highlight those shadow sides, yeah. I feel, and and put the spotlight on those things. Uh, I think like just a couple of things off the top of my head, um, fanaticism, um, you know, is a shadow side, you know, um, that might be highlighted online bullying, online trolling, which has increased phenomenally, I must admit, over the last few years. You know, every time we have, a, I don't know if you've noticed this, Paula, but every time we have a Mercury retrograde, the online trolling and bullying goes bonkers. It just goes berserk. I don't know if you... But I'll pay attention. Yeah, and, and you can almost pinpoint it to the day Mercury goes retrograde and it stops when Mercury goes direct. Nothing to do with Pluto and Aquarius there, but Mercury rules um, yeah. social media and things like that. Um, and because Aquarius is internet, you know, this is a, um, like, not that Pluto is the bully of the, of, uh, the solar system, but he does manipulate power, dominance, control, and it's going to come through the internet, I think, is mm -hmm. the shadow side, you know, online crime. Pluto does have a, in, in its shadow side, the ruling of criminals and what have you. Cyber attacks might be another thing, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, dark web, and I don't want to go too much into all that sort of thing. But um, herd mentality is another thing that is um, a bit of a shadow side of of Aquarius energy. So Pluto's going to be shining a light on where are we behaving like a herd instead of recognizing what is truth, what is real, doing our own research, um, false democracy, opinionitis. <laughs> These things are shadow sides of uh, um, Aquarius. Also science without a heart. This is something that concerns me and, I, and hopefully Pluto does shine a light and compost this side of Aquarius. Um, too much mind without spirituality, you know, too much in the logic, too much in the head and not in the feeling, not in the connection, you know. So um, they're just some things that I feel Pluto might be turning his spotlight onto. Do you, do you have anything else that you think Pluto might be focusing in on in the shadow? Yeah. Um, well, the revolutionary, you know, people that are just all about social justice and that's it. And it's just like, blind 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 let's go to war yeah because you know aquarius when it's totally in its amplified state it is all about justice and you can just seek an endless need for justice you know and so that could really come up um again i i agree with what you're saying like that herd mentality or that it's too much we could get too much into that collective story that shadow could come up. Um, 
yeah the two intellectual and elitist pods like pods where we're too separate from each other that can happen yeah um and yet too separate you know that it, it can get to this point where we can live in these echo chambers so the shadow could be okay we get the internet um back and and the bullying and all of the shadow with technology could force more and more people out into their little communities but in a way where they do separate where they do live only in their echo chamber and then the individual stops evolving because it's not being exposed to interesting new ways of seeing the world so i'm sure that will happen because everything has the spectrum of all of it mm -hmm. um but yeah I, that would be something i'm really conscious of like my algorithms for example i know how to manipulate them now if i watch some weird youtube thing and it starts throwing back at me like weird stuff i just go okay i'll watch three videos that i love and then my algorithm comes back online and you know that's kind of me creating my own little echo chamber mm -hmm. so that is a shadow of this and i i get the algorithms are good it's convenient but if if we never change we never change you know one of the other higher expressions of aquarius is the iterations in evolution it's you know it's those weird little adjustments at the dna level that creates a, ne a next level of the species or you know and if things never change they never change so that could that could be even though aquarius is about the new paradigms the future change disruptions i mean well that's bringing the uranus energy but it could be that we could separate out so much because we're all so her that we end up just like i said living in a vacuum or in an echo chamber yeah and the, one of the things about aquarius that i find very difficult to get my head around is it's quite a polaric sign really because it's ruled by two very opposite planets saturn and Uranus and it is a fixed sign so Aquarius likes change and progress but there's a stubbornness in yeah. fact it's one of the most stubborn signs to anything too different until I know yeah. in my head that this is the right thing to do I'm not changing and I refuse to change so mm. there's another shadow side you know this stubborn energy of Aquarius that um yeah holds off from what is uh perhaps what is needed that's the saturn element uh rulership mm -hmm. coming in so it's really it is to me one of the most complex signs in all of astrology and i to be honest i i still find it hard to get my head around it completely so but it is aquarius <laughs> oh yeah i know it's just how it's meant to be <laughs> it's complex it's multi-dimensional it's multifaceted and maybe, you know, as we move more into Aquarian energies, we will be able to understand it, but it's like coming at trying to understand things from a completely different perspective. Yeah. And to your point, I do worry about um, the lack of heart and just justice for the sake of it. You know, mm. compassion is key. And, uh, you know, when you take emotions out of it like you can be really kind without being emotionally invested yeah. in fact it's inherent instinctual when a human's left into it as, for example if someone fell over right now in front of you and i we would immediately go and help them we would be kind there's no emotion we wouldn't ask what religion they were what gender they identify as we would just go and help that is the human species so the shadow of Aquarius is it's very intellectual, very dry, very stubborn, as you said, very, you know, it can be very militant. This is how it's going to be. Yeah. But I don't know, maybe I always can't help but go to the positive. Maybe we need a bit of that less emotional drive and desires and a bit more of this, like, let's just bring some things into, into structure, you know, like the Pluto Libra generation marrying for love where did that get us you know? <laughs> and it's like well what version of love are you talking about like there's layers to it and Aquarius is like no it's not emotional it's more practical so there's a shadow to that but maybe it's what we need to to move the story forwards right now
Yeah. I love that you always err to the positive. I appreciate that because I, I do have a bit of, I've got a lot of eighth house planets and I do tend to look at the dark side and I'm like, this is, <laughs> this is what's unfolding. This is what's going to happen. So yeah. it's a good balance. Another reason why I was so keen to do this with you because I knew you'd balance out my cynicism. <laughs> I can't, it's the Gemini, like I'm strong Gemini and, and Gemini's job in the tribe is to go beyond the polarity, it's to get out of the duality. And again, I love the Aquarius, you know, invitation to go multidimensional. You're not just a Libra sun or a, your, your whole chart, you're a complex divine being that's got a lot more going on. We all have 12 houses. We all have every sign in us and this is so Aquarius so I think maybe this is where uh, astrology is going to just keep growing because we are starting to realize wait a minute there's more to us mm. than just I was born on this date yeah yeah so a bit but well, what do you think Ksenia will happen yeah. when Pluto goes into Aquarius for astrologers at all people in fields that Aquarius rules I well I was a bit nail bitey uh about saturn going into aquarius because i thought saturn's rules and regulations they're going to totally regulate the life out of our practice yeah. you know and make it all hierarchical and you must get xyz blah 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 to be able to do what you do and um that was concerning to me because i love the uranian side of astrology which is liberate that it brings liberation it brings freedom yeah. and it's a very higher level scientific knowledge um so, yeah, but that hasn't happened, touch wood. Saturn's still got a bit of a way to go. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that hasn't happened. So I'm relieved about that. Pluto, I think, because Pluto actually is connected very powerfully to um, astrology mm. uh, itself. It rules uh, Scorpio in modern astrology. And, uh, and, and Scorpio is a very much connected to astrology as well. So, you know, there is this. Pluto's high intuition, whereas Uranus is the science of astrology. So that's the difference. You know, Uranus, Aquarius, science of astrology, Pluto, Scorpio, the highly intuitive sort of downloads yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. So I think Pluto is really going to empower people in these fields of work, in astrological work. I think that astrology is like we started off by saying with the millennial generation who are all born with Pluto in, in Scorpio, they're going to rise into their positions of power now. They love astrology. And I really think that's where that's where Pluto and Aquarius is going to just empower that work yeah. even more. So being an astrologer at this time in world history is yeah. really exciting. And I think, you know, we're totally heading in a, a rather thrilling direction but that said i think there'll be some composting too the the charlatans the people That's what i was going to ask you yeah 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 the people who don't know their stuff and aren't doing true astrology uh, there are a lot yeah there are a lot of manipulators uh yeah. and people pulling the wool over other people's eyes yeah. with this work I, I think pluto will shine a light on those people there's a lot of um i call them cut and paste astrologers mm. that you know can put together the information because they're universal archetypes they're eternal yeah. and they're universal and until we're no longer humans they're relevant and yeah. so anyone can take bits and put it together and unfortunately the masses don't fully understand. They can't distinguish who's cut and paste and who's really embodied their work and is has integrated what they know about it. So I think it's going to be interesting to see if they get flushed out or, you know, mm. I was actually, I was going to ask you that because I think, it, yeah, it will be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, yep. Well, I mean, if Pluto is anything to go by, he's going to expose. Yeah the lack of truth that's another of his agendas what pluto does is where is where are things not authentic where are things yeah. not real let's show it and you know aquarius as a sign oh. is, is a sign all about authenticity yeah so, so you know if you're not authentic with this if you're just on the bandwagon for the sake of being on the bandwagon like you said cut and paste astrology yeah. then um you know i think you'll not not that any harm's going to come to you if you happen to be watching this and you're one of those people you'll have to <laughs> study <laughs> you have to actually learn your shit. Yes, you will definitely um, need to know your stuff. Yeah, you won't, yeah. Be able to, you won't be able to 
hide that any longer. It's going to get real. So that's exciting. That, well, that could be because people are starting to learn more about astrology at the collective level and they can go, they can, they maybe it's not even that the people will be revealed, but the masses will go, well, we know that's not, we you're just saying the same thing. We've heard a million times. What's your unique Aquarius view on this? Yeah, true. True. That that feels right to me. I like that. Yeah. What else do you think might be happening to individuals with Pluto in Aquarius during this time? As in their personal charts, do you mean? Well, no, because um, for everybody who isn't aware, um, I've just finished a series looking at Pluto's transit through every sign, uh, every house rather, in the horoscope. So do check that series out and see where what Pluto is going to be influencing in your life and get the lowdown on how it's going to affect you personally. But, um, you know, Pluto in, in Aquarius, what does it mean? Well, I'll give you an example. I think yeah. Pluto in Aquarius for an individual means that a lot of individual people are going to be breaking free from outmoded forms of self-definition. They're going to be shedding skins of the past. So there's yeah. real breaking free. That's going to happen for us all individually. So that's the kind of thing I'm asking. What do you feel might be happening for individual people when Pluto's in Aquarius? Do you know, I haven't really thought about this. That's well, right. I'm happy to answer for both of us. <laughs> you can, my love. Um, Feel free to sort of anything that, like, you're the intuitive astrologer. If anything just sort of pops in, you know, go for it. Oh, Jump yeah. in and interrupt me. But well, I think, yeah. Oh, well, I was just going to say, I feel, I feel that it's these moments to stop and to feel into what is it that's unique about you. Yes. The triple conjunction we just had, um, I shared with my community, I did a, a really cool little masterclass and I talked about the the new paradigms where we're moving towards it's about sitting with what is it that is unique where do maybe multiple lineages meet within you mm -hmm. where does it come together and with that triple conjunction happening in Taurus self-sustainability it to me at the individual level what is unique about you is what will sustain you through these times of great change and to take advantage of these new technologies you know you can work in corporate you can have a unique way of doing human resources or admin or you could be a gp find your unique way of doing this work mm -hmm. and use technology you could be an administrative assistant for two different companies why do you have to work for one yeah. and that will sustain you so i feel this pluto and aquarius time will give us a powerful opportunity to really express what is unique about you with the understanding that it is what will sustain and carry you through not just what's special and different about me it's like no yeah. this is what and and the generalists not the experts and not generalists like i'm kind of good at this kind of good at that i'm actually for me i love i've been studying tarot since i was 15 astrology not to the degree of ksenia everybody since i was 15 um like and when i say since i was 15 i don't mean in a school i was reading <laughs> magazines okay let's be <laughs> um but it's been in my life and esoteric knowledge arts Tibetan Buddhism, I've been studying that deeply for six years and just bringing those together, that is a unique expression that I don't think many people, well, no one would have my life experience on top no. of that as well. So, and then this technology, here I am having a conversation with you. How could I have ever done that before? How could we have ever let people know how we see the world yeah. and share that to, I hope, inspire something in you whoever's listening to go well, what is that that's unique about me this is Aquarius baby you know like that's what are you what do you bring to the collective we don't have to just sit back and let the powers dominate and tell us and dictate to us anymore this is the age of revolution and we are going to learn more and more through this Aquarian time and Pluto and Aquarius is how much we all each of us co-create this reality we are not just from this Piscean time of just going with the flow and the fish. We are co-creators. If you each and me and Ksenia, all of us, 
we awaken that which is within us and we bring forth that which is within us we help evolve the species mm -hmm. we are part of it we're not separate beautiful okay yeah. mic drop <laughs> thank you i'm out of here people <laughs> love it no but i get so passionate about this because yeah. that's where you know the rubber hits the road and this is our lifetime we were born at this time for the right yes. reasons it's not a mistake trust me guys i've had so many moments in the last four years where i've been was I born at the wrong time? This is scary. Yeah. What's going on? And then I know I was born at the right time and I practice what I preach. I am doing my best to bring forth that which is within me to, as I said, inspire you guys to do the same. It's about humanity, Aquarius, yeah. all of us. We're all in this together. Yeah, we're all in this together. <laughs> well, we will be if we're not already. <laughs> I think yeah. that sort of yeah bringing things down to a level playing field will hopefully happen um i love that thank you for sharing that paula it is beautiful and i love your excitement it gets me excited too I get passionate. yeah yeah it's wonderful um i think pluto and aquarius is going to really uh, cause us to be a bit more objective about mm -hmm. things too um which i think is is maybe a little bit necessary a lot of people have become not objective <laughs> in recent years you know too uh subjective um so you know that that will be a, a healthy thing that will come out of this as well i'll probably uh, let me just list a couple of other things that i think are gonna happen and then we probably need to wrap this up um because people will have yeah. things to do <laughs> i could keep going though but yeah. we could um i think because aquarius is a sign of friendship it's a friendly sign Pluto's going to revolutionize a lot of friendships. Like he's going to compost a lot of friendships. There might be some emotional shocks or disappointments or leavings and rejections of friendship groups. And we've already seen these signals occurring in uh, the last couple of years in preparation for his move into Aquarius. So I think like you described with the, the, the human, um, the, um, like little villages and what have you, um, we're going to connect with, the, the right people the true people that for mm. us you know whoever that is for us and that's different for everybody and we may even end up with only having a few close friendships but pluto friendships deep friendships you know mm. passionate friendships friendships of substance rather than a, a heap of just tons and tons of acquaintances yeah. i think we're going to have um, a redefinition of our friendship groups and that's already been sort of like that's been happening so um, yeah. I think that's going to continue um, to happen. Well, that's the breaking down of all of those institutions, the institution yeah. of blood is thicker than water. Mm. You know, we're going to meet our soul family. Yes. Maybe even, maybe even, because Aquarius, we haven't talked about how galactic and cosmic it is. Maybe we're going to meet. talk about it. <laughs> bring in the aliens. Come on. <laughs> okay. Because that is very Aquarius, but you know, I don't know. But yeah, really beyond that institution of till death do us part, blood is thicker than water. We're seeing it in gender fluidity. It's like it's already morphing and it's, I find that so exciting. Mm. I think there's going to be a real rejection of any situation in life that tries to define us, to that tells us who we have to be and how we have to act. And that's exciting. You know, that's that liberating Aquari um, Aquarian and Uranian com yeah. component coming in, um, which I think is the higher expression of Aquarius you know we're going to be us um and if that means we lose connections along the way so be it you know yeah. we want all this authenticity and truth now in who we are that's um, it the water bearer pouring the water to bring it into balance it's not it's like you said it's objective but in a good way yeah it's like this is what we need we need to bring that equity back we need to sort it out yeah oh wow uh, it's exciting it is. There's a look. I think there's going to be a big pulling away from mainstream society as well, um, and I think that there's like remember the let's call it the duality of Aquarius, Saturn and Uranus. Mm. There's going to be some old school people who are going to feel really threatened by this and really oh, yeah. uncomfortable about that. And again, we've been seeing it the last yeah. couple of years. So, but it's not going to stop. You know, if we think oh. that that 
component of what we've been seeing, I mean, hopefully all the fear ends, but that component of pulling away from mainstream society, some people feeling threatened, some people feeling excited about this new paradigm, um, that this is the split. I mean, Dolores Cannon talked about this a lot. She described, you know, the new earth, she called it, but I, mm-hmm. it's more happening on an energetic level than yeah. physical two mm-hmm. earths kind of thing. And so Pluto in Aquarius, I think, is going to bring that about more, this mm-hmm. splitting of society in two different directions, thanks Saturn and Uranus ruling this sign. Um, yeah. So I think, yeah. that Do you see it, that the Saturn-Uranus square that we're in, we've got the fourth one coming up, mm. being that squeeze, push-pull? We can't really know my sense and, until those two planets kind of move and separate with Saturn in Aquarius, until that starts to come up start separating and pulling apart let's see and then pluto goes into aquarius yeah oh, big you, times man. it is big times absolutely and that's the old guard the tradition conserve capricornian conservatism and uranian evolution wow yeah i uh the the, the rough ride isn't over yet but uh, you know i remember we talked about pam gregory a moment ago um yes. she said at the beginning of this year, that by the end of this year, we're going to be in a totally different space, totally different space. And we will be worn out and battle weary, but we will be victorious. And that's what the astrology is speaking to. You know, she's quite right. We're already halfway there. So, you know, it it, it is what's happening. Um, There's a resistance, you know, and this is Aquarian too, um, resisting being shackled, conditioned and defined by the customs of society. You know, we're not going to, that's not going to be the case when Pluto's in Aquarius, you know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so things are, in a sense, they're wrapping up the sort of the the difficult, let's, let's call it a birthing, the labor yeah. pains. And when Pluto goes into Aquarius, the baby's born. Right. Here we are. This is our new world, our new paradigm. How are we going to grow this thing? It How are we going to nurture alien. this thing? It's probably <laughs> going to be an alien. <laughs> it's born in Aquarius. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. True that. <laughs> Oh, I love this. I love this conversation. <laughs> you make me laugh. <laughs> um, I've learned so much actually from you today. Thank you. It's yeah. been so cool. Did you have anything else you wanted to add to this conversation? I mean, we could keep talking for ages, but I'm I am conscious of the length. No, I've got, I have uh, an appointment in ten minutes. Oh wow! Well. To say I'm running late. Okay. Okay. Because as well. So yes. do you, do you want to? What do you want to do? Do you want me oh, to? I think if we, sorry, Dal. You go. I was just going to say, I think if we wrap it up here, I want to say thank you so much for your, for sharing your beautiful time, your wisdom, your knowledge with us to talk about these amazing things. Now, if you're interested in following along with Paula's work, the link will be in the description below. Do check that out. But Paula, it's been such an honor to have you here on my channel. Thank you, my friend. Always a pleasure to connect and talk ideas with you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And so much love to all the people listening. And I just wish you all so well and embrace your Aquarian energy and so much love. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And hopefully we'll have Paula back again soon. We'll catch you later.